Hi everyone, welcome to the new section, working with hierarchical data. This section shows which APIs D3.js provides to work with hierarchical data. We'll use D3.js to create different kinds of trees, and also show tree map and pack visualizations. Moving on to the first video of this section, normal tree visualization. In this video, we'll be visualizing hierarchical data as a simple horizontal tree. Let's see tree-based visualizations. While looking at data to use for this section, I stumbled upon a couple of samples where the tree of life was visualized. The tree of life contains a complete or partial taxonomy of all the living organisms in the world, from the smallest bacteria to apes and humans. This image nicely shows what a visualization could look like. Now we will be getting and sanitizing the data. If you go to the ITIS website, you can find taxonomies for all different kinds of animal groups. You can find a download button, which allows you to download a pipe separated file. The content of the file looks like this. Now we combine this data into a simple to use format. For D3, we will output the data in format like this. Here we have ID, parent ID, name and description. If you want to refer to how we can create this data file, have a look at this JS file. We'll skip the script used to sanitize the data, since it looks pretty much the same as the previous ones, and just show you the resulting CSV. If you're interested in the script itself, you can find it in the data directory of this section, called cleananimals.js. Now that we have the data, let's see what we can do with it. Next, let's start with normal tree. With D3, we can create different types of tree visualization. We can create radial trees, such as the tree of life image shown previously, but also create normal trees, which follow a horizontal layout. Here we start with the normal horizontal tree. In this figure, you don't see the complete tree since it's too large to show, but only a small part. We'll also explain in this section how you can add zoom and pan functionality to your graph to navigate large visualizations like this tree. To visualize this tree, we're going to follow some steps. The first thing we need to do is load the data and convert it into a hierarchical data structure. Once we have hierarchical data, we use the d3.tree function to convert this data to a set of x and y coordinates that we can use to draw the lines and the nodes. When we have these coordinates, we can draw the line, the circle, and the text elements. Finally, we'll add the zoom functionality to this visualization, so that we can easily move around our visualized tree. So let's start with converting data into a hierarchical data structure. Let's quickly look back at the data we will be using. When we use d3.csv to load this data, the resulting JavaScript object will look something like this. You can see in this data that we don't really have a hierarchical data structure yet, but all the information is available to construct one. We know what our parent is, so by just processing all the loaded data elements, we should be able to convert the separate objects to a single tree. Use functionality provided by D3 for this. Here you can see that after loading the data, we use the D3.stratify function to convert our loaded data into a tree. With the default settings, d3.stratify will use the ID property of the data array to identify a node, and the parent ID property to identify a node's parent. If your data has different properties, you can use the stratify.id, my ID, and the stratify.parent ID, my parent, functions to change how stratify works. For our data, the properties match, so we just use the default stratify function. The root of our data is now converted into tree. The original properties can be accessed through the data property, a node's children through the children property, and a node's parent through the parent property. Next topic is using D3 built-in functionality to create a tree. Now that we have our data in a hierarchical format, we need to convert it to a structure that has x and y coordinates that represent the position of each node in the tree. Have a look at this highlighted code. 
Here, we use the d3.tree function to extend our hierarchical data with layout information, which we can use to draw the line, circle, and text elements. When you create a d3.tree, you can configure it by calling these functions tree.size and tree.separation. Looking at the previous table, we can see that we set the total size of our tree to height into 3, width into 2. This allows us to create a very large tree on which we'll use D3's zoom functionality to navigate. Also, note that we use height.width instead of width.height. The reason is that we want to draw a horizontally oriented tree and not a vertically oriented one. Finally, we define our separation based on whether the nodes have the same parent. If they do, we set a separation of 5, otherwise we set a separation of 13. Post that, we will be drawing the tree elements. The first element we'll draw are the lines between the individual nodes. To draw these lines, we use this JavaScript fragment. We need to use this stratify function. D3 also provides us with a couple of helper functions for selecting specific. Here we use the descendants function to get an array of all the nodes. We're going to draw lines from a node to its parent. So we need to remove the first element from our array slice 1, which is our root node, which hasn't got a parent. We create an SVG path element D for all the nodes, which is set to the result of the diagonal function. In the diagonal function, we create a Bezier curve using SVG syntax. When drawing paths with SVG, we have to specify which type of line we want to draw, and how to draw that line. There are different ways we can create curves in SVG. Mozilla Developer Network has quite extensive documentation on paths and curves here. Finally, we will see adding panning and zooming to the visualization. Adding zoom and pan functionality to an existing chart is very easy. All the code required is highlighted here. In this code fragment, we define the d3.zoom we want to use. By setting the scale extent function, we define how far in and out we can zoom. So, our minimum scale value is 0.1, which means we can zoom out 10 times and the maximum scale factor is 10, which means we can zoom in 10 times. Whenever a user zooms or pans, we call the zoomed function, which is defined here. In this function, we can use the d3.event.transform property to set the new SVG transform property on our chart. This will zoom in and pan the chart to the required location. To make this work, we need to attach the zoom to our chart which we do by calling this command. Now we can use the left mouse button to pan our tree, and the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. The d3.zoom functionality provides a lot of different functions. In this part, we've only used a small part of it. For more information on what can be done with d3.zoom, look at this API documentation. At this point, we've got all our lines drawn and it's already starting to look like a tree. The only thing left to do is add the circles and the text elements. Here is the highlighted code for it. Here you can see that we add a G element for each of our nodes, which we position at the correct location, and we set a specific class based on whether it's an internal node or an end leaf. Note once again that we switch the X and Y positions since we want to create a horizontal tree instead of a vertical one. Finally, we add the text nodes where we show the name from our initially loaded data. So let's check our output. Nice, we've obtained our output. As you can see in this image, we've now got circles for the individual nodes and also show the name. What you can also already see is that representing this complete structure in a tree results in a very large visualization. Here we end our video.